Earl Johnson of Moxie remembers their first lead singer, the great Buzz Sherman. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Canada. Lead singer Buzz Sherman died in June 1983. It was a motorcycle accident. He was with Moxie for their first three albums, and then he was replaced by, of all people, a young Mike Ranowski, later to be known as Mike Reno of Loverboy. I asked Earl Johnson about a singer that I really loved, Buzz Sherman. Where were you when you heard about Buzz's passing? Pretty quick, because what had happened, uh, Buzz and I, just before he died, um, we had done uh, some stuff with Leanne. We were on her album, and then we did a show on City TV here in Toronto at the time, a couple of live songs. So Buzz and I started talking about, look, at, let's get back together. I don't know if it's going to be Mox, you know, what's going to be, but let's get back together and start working on stuff, songs again, and try, you know. So we were talking towards getting to that stage, and uh, I met, I went over one night and I spent time with him and uh, his wife, Val, and their son, Jesse, at the time. And, uh, and then, uh, I mean, I heard about it, there, like, you know, right the day that after the night that it happened. You know, right away. Yeah, a motorcycle you know, I, accident's pretty sudden. It's pretty like it's yeah. done, you know? Yeah, yeah. I actually ran into an officer that was at the scene of the, the accident and told me some details about it, which are kind of like, I kind of don't want to repeat, you know? Yeah, of course. Yeah, full report. It was pretty pretty wild. Do you remember yeah. the day you met him? <sighs> yeah, I do, because um, uh, I had a good buddy of mine in Hamilton when I was around 17. And he was a bass player, really good bass player. Me and him used to get together and jam all the time. And he was a few steps ahead of me musically. He was a really smart guy and theory-wise and all this. And uh, he ended up somehow, well, we, there used to be jams in Hamilton. The wise at this old YMCA in Hamilton. It was half condemned this place. I mean, it was bizarre. But they would have, um, Jerry Doucette would be doing a jam there. Our mama let him play. Mm-hmm. Jerry would be in there doing it. There's a, and there's this guy, a guy called Ron Marinelli, who was the guitar player at Hamilton at the time. And they put together this band called Flacking. And then they, um, Gene told me he joined this new band. And uh, I said, okay, was this, well, you're going to see it. I'm going to rehearse a little but you'll see it soon. He, um, anyways, he shows up and Buzz is a singer. So I met Buzz um, probably like two years before I, I even saw him again. And he was funding that band, Flapping. And I remember going to see them play around Hamilton. It was a phenomenal band, two guitars. They were doing wishbone ass kind of stuff that never came out with a, with a product, never came out with a record. It was it was a story. It was a disaster that it didn't happen. And then what happened is I, I thought, when I joined King Biscuit Boy, we started doing some gigs with Buzz's old band Lee Ashford in and around Toronto. That's when me and him got talking, and uh, he told me at one point, well, I'm winding the band down. I'm looking to try and do something else. I said, well, I kind of want to get out of doing the blues thing, too. I'm ready to start getting into something. He said, well, let's, you know, figure out what we can do. He says, why don't you join Lee Astrid for a while? And i got tons of gigs. You can keep working, and we'll see what we can come up with song-wise. So that's how we got, how we worked it out. What was your first reaction to him when you first met him? Oh, intense as hell. He was so intense on stage, uh, such a stage presence, even in a large stage. We would do, like, you know, large venues, 8, 10, 12,000 people. He, he was, you know, and you didn't have video in those days, you know. But he just had such a commanding stage presence. It was very, very impressive. Was he really going to possibly join ACDC after Bond died? Jesse Fink wrote um, the Bond Scott book, which just came out recently. And Jesse interviewed me about a year ago. And I just asked him for some of the quotes so I could put it probably into my own book and put it on some posts. I wasn't with the band. I, I just got the news secondhand that, you know, they had, and we had we did four days with ACDC. So they saw how, and Buzz had a lot of Bon Scott in him, a lot of it. So they saw what Buzz was like as a front man, what it was like on stage. That's what Bon was like to a large degree. They wanted that kind of presence up there. Uh, so they did ask him. They, they apparently had a standing invite for him to come down to Australia. The tickets were ready to go to audition for the band. Wow. And at that time, they were not quite. They, didn't, they were they were taken off, but they hadn't fully took it off. Right? They were doing well. They were doing real well in the states. They were touring regularly, you know. And but see, what happened is when we finished riding high, uh, we were touring in '77. Buzz developed throat nodes, and uh, he was having a real hard problem, hard, hard time singing, real hard time. 40 Years and Still Riding High is the latest from Moxie. You can pick it up via the description of this video. We'll have links. We'll have more of our conversation with Earl Johnson coming up next week. I'm John Bowden. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. This is Rock History Canada.